Well, hi, boys and girls. This is Mr. Wasman, and today, once again, we're going to be solving some division number stories. Uh, but this time, the number stories have a measurement component to them. We are in our home links, Unit 7, Lesson 8. So let's go ahead and read the instructions to find out what we're going to do. It says, read each number story, use the information to write a number model with an unknown, and then solves. Now, as a fourth grade teacher, I teach more than just math. I teach reading, I teach social studies, science, and I also teach kids writing. And one of the things that I always tell my kids to do is read what you've written if you wrote it to help you proofread. Read it aloud, to hear it uh, being said aloud, because the best way to catch uh, silly mistakes is by reading your work, because if it sounds odd, it's probably wrong. And you know what? Even adults sometimes make, uh, you know, silly mistakes, like writing the word solves instead of just solve. Use the information to write a number model with an unknown and then solve. But you know what? We're not going to be hung up on a, on a spelling error. We're just going to realize that everyone makes mistakes and learning is a growth process, and we're just going to move on. Let's read problem number one. It says, Kelly is in charge of bringing water for her softball game. The eight members of the team have matching team water bottles that hold 500 milliliters. Kelly buys five liters of water at the store. If she fills all the bottles, how many milliliters of water will Kelly have left? So, with any story problem, I'm going to utilize the ruckus strategy. That is, of course, to reread the problem. Underline the question, circle the important information, come up with an action plan, and then solve it. Now, the title of this home link activity is Division Number Stories. Okay, So I'm going to assume my action plan is to divide something. But let's look again and read with attention. It says, Kelly is in charge of bringing water for her softball game. The Eight members of the team have matching team water bottles that hold 500 milliliters. Kelly buys five liters of water at the store. If she fills all the bottles, how many milliliters of water will Kelly have left? So we got a couple things going on here. We know that there's eight people on the team. They have 500 milliliter water bottles. And Kelly bought five liters of water, which is a another measurement unit. So we have to figure out, one, how much water will the eight members need to fill their water bottles, and how much water does Kelly have in comparison. So the first thing that would be useful to know is how many milliliters are in a liter. Well, if you recall from previous lessons, for every one liter, that's the equivalent of a thousand milliliters. The nice thing about the metric system is that uh, the prefixes that we put in front of measurement units uh, are a clue to how many units are there. M, or milli, uh, stands for a thousand. Okay? So there are a thousand milliliters in uh, one liter, which means that Kelly bought 5,000 milliliters of water, because five times a thousand, of course, would give you 5,000. So, what I need to do now is I have to figure out how much water will eight members uh, of a softball team need if each of their water bottles holds 500 milliliters. So, that is just a multiplication problem. I'm going to multiply eight times 500. And of course, 8 times 5 is 40. So if I multiply 8 times 500, or 5 with two zeros, my answer is going to be 40 with two extra zeros, or otherwise known as 4,000. So I have 8 water bottles that hold 4,000 milliliters total, and Kelly, who bought the water for the team, has 5,000 milliliters. Well, 
what I have to do here is I need to subtract the total amount of water minus the total amount of water needed. So I can set this problem up like this. I'm going to take my 5,000 milliliters and I'm going to subtract the product of 8 times 500 milliliters and that's going to give me my difference. I'll say our unknown is W for water. Okay, well, if we know that 8 times 500 is going to give us 4,000, then the problem literally becomes, what is 5,000 minus 4,000? Well, 5 minus 4, of course, is 1, so that would give us a total of 1,000 milliliters. Now, you might be wondering to yourself, well, Mr. Wasman, where did the division come in? I used a little bit of multiplication here. Um, and I used some subtraction, but not division. Well, there's another way we could have approached this problem that does involve division. And again, using division would rely on our understanding of measurement units. 500 milliliters is exactly half of a liter, because there are a thousand milliliters in a liter, and 500 is half of a thousand. So another way I could have looked at this problem is by saying there are eight members of the softball team and they each have a water bottle that holds half of a liter. So how many liters is that? Well, that would be eight players with half a liter of, in a water bottle each, or eight halves. Now when I have a fraction like this, an improper fraction, I gotta ask myself how many groups of two or how many holes can I get out of eight halves? Okay, well that becomes a simple problem of dividing my dividend, the number I'm dividing, by my divisor. So how many groups of two can I get out of eight? Well, you probably already saw this as soon as I wrote the fraction, but you can get four groups of 2 out of 8 because 4 times 2 is 8. 8 divided by 2 is 4. So if I know I have 4 liters worth of water bottles and I have 5 liters of water, I could have set up this problem like this. 5 liters minus 8 halves of a liter equals, and then again we put our unit W for water, so within the parentheses we would have to divide 8 by 2 and then subtract it from 5, and that's where the division component comes in. Either way, we are going to be left with 1,000 milliliters. Okay. So each of these division measurement number stories involve you thinking about division and thinking about converting between measurement units. Let's look at one more, shall we? In number three, it tells us that in women's softball, the pitcher stands about 13 meters from the batter's box. In men's softball, the pitcher stands about 1,400 centimeters from the batter's box. About how many more centimeters is it from the men's pitcher? to the batter's box from the women's pitcher to the batter's box. Okay, and again, they're asking us to compare amounts that are in different units. So just comparing, I'm looking at 13 meters versus 1,400 or 1,400 centimeters. And again, the division component comes in because I need to compare the difference between 13 meters and 1,400 centimeters. So again, it would be useful for us to remember that for every one meter, there are 100 centimeters. So one of the ways I can approach this problem is that I'm going to subtract 1,400 centimeters minus 13 
meters equals, we'll say, B for batter's box. Now, when I have two different units, I have to convert one or the other. And again, this is where division comes in handy. If I know that there are 100 centimeters per meter, in order to figure out how many meters, 1,400 centimeters gives us, I would divide that amount by 100. Now, you might be thinking, uh, a, a, a divisor with three digits? Well, when it only involves a number with zeros, like so, we can briefly ignore the zeros and just concentrate on the whole number parts, the whole number digits. So basically, I'm dividing 14 by 1. How many groups of 1 can I get out of 14? Well, of course, that would be 14, right? Because if I multiply 100 times 14, like so, I'm going to get 1,400. And if I subtract the difference, I'm left with 0. So I can get 14 meters out of 1,400 centimeters. So basically, what I'm doing here is I'm subtracting 14 meters minus 13 meters. And of course, that's going to give me one meter left over. Okay. Now, of course, they are really trying to make sure that you're paying attention because they want the answer in centimeters. And again, if I am left with one meter difference, that's the equivalent of 100 centimeters. Again, boys and girls, number stories are just basically a way for math teachers to help you understand that Math is something that we use every day, all the time, in any number of situations. So being uh, able to multiply, divide, subtract on the fly is really one of those life skills that you need to have in your back pocket in any situation you face. All right, the last thing we're going to do is take a look at one of these problems in the practice section where we're adding or subtracting mixed numbers. And again, if you recall from previous lessons, uh, we're going to treat mixed numbers just like any number that has more than one place value. Let's take a look at problem number 7, shall we? 7 and 5 twelfths minus 2 and 3 twelfths. Well, again, when I'm presented with a, a number problem like this that is horizontal, I can just simply turn that problem into a vertical algorithm by just rewriting it. The important thing here is I have to line up my place values. Because when I subtract, I'm going to start not with the whole numbers, but with the fractional parts. What is 5 twelfths minus 3 twelfths? And again, I'm only going to be paying attention to the numerators. I'm subtracting twelfths from twelfths. So basically I'm asking myself, how much is five minus three? Well, the difference would be two. Two what? Two twelfths. And then when I subtract seven minus two, that leaves me with a difference of five. So if I start with seven and five twelfths, and I subtract two and three twelfths, I'm going to be left with five and two twelfths as my difference. So as long as you line up those place values, fractional parts and whole numbers, the calculations will go pretty easy. But what if it's not easy? What if you do this kind of stuff and you're still scratching your head thinking, I'm still not sure, this still is a little confusing. I, I think I'm right, this sort of looks like it's correct, but I don't know. Well, if you're feeling that way, then you need to talk to your math teacher. Okay, this instructional video that I'm providing you is very helpful, I'm sure. But if it's still not doing the trick, you need to talk to a real live person. Okay, reach out to your math teacher. Tell them, hey, I need help. Could you, you know, check my work? Could you look at this problem? I, I just need a second opinion. Okay, that's their job. They are happy to help you. Okay, I do hope this video was helpful to you in some ways. And until we talk again, friends, have a good day. Thanks.